Hey, this is Connor from Biker's Edge. Today we're talking all about the Santa Cruz Heckler MX. The MX is the mixed wheel size or the mullet version with the big 29 inch front wheel, small 27 and a half inch rear wheel. It also comes with Shimano's new EP8 motor and drive system. So is it any good? Stick around and find out. I need to start this video off with a little bit of a disclaimer. I rode this bike a lot. Uh, I spent an entire week on it in the desert, put in over 100 miles on it. The day I chose to film was not my best day ever on a bike. I got super lost, like Moses wandering in the desert for 40 years kind of lost. And I got a flat tire, ended up having to hike out back to the truck. So not a great day when I was filming. That doesn't really affect my thoughts or opinions on the bike at all because like I said, I spent an entire week on it. So let's get into it. So if you wanna learn more about the standard Heckler, the 27.5, we did a video on that when it came out. Um, I will kind of compare this one to that one just a little bit, just because it makes sense. They're basically the same bike. They use the same frame, um, same front triangle, rear triangle, except the uh, Heckler MX obviously gets the, the 29 inch fork, the 29 inch front wheel. It also sees a reduction in travel, so it goes from 150, 160 to 140, 140, just across the board. And with putting on that bigger fork and bigger front wheel, the geometry changes. Not because the frame changes, but just because you're lifting that front end up with a taller axle to crown height on that 29 inch fork. The head tube gets tipped back just a little bit, so does the seat tube angle. In the process of making things a little bit slacker, the, the reach shrinks just a little bit. I don't think it's gonna be all that noticeable though compared to the original because the wheelbase remains the same. Uh, because you do have that more raked out front end, that front wheel gets further out in front of you. And yeah, your wheelbase is within like two or three millimeters on both versions. One thing I really like that Santa Cruz has done with the Heckler MX is they've stuck with the 27 and a half inch rear wheel. When you make an e-bike, you've got a big motor and it takes up a lot of space down by your bottom bracket and it makes it just kind of physically impossible to keep those chainstays nice and short, nice and tucked in. But when you do the 27 and a half inch wheel bike, you automatically, I guess by default, have a shorter rear end because you have a smaller wheel in the back. So you're able to keep the bike kind of more nimble, uh, keep that rear center just a little bit shorter. So I'm the kind of guy I don't get caught up in ultra technical stuff when it comes to bikes, especially e-bikes, because there's some sort of voodoo magic that I just don't understand and can't wrap my head around. So it just makes me angry and confused. <laughs> I, I try to focus on the things that actually change how I feel when I'm riding the bike or the things that change how much fun I have while I'm riding the bike. So the first thing that I think is super important, uh, is there enough power? And yes, that answer is, a, is yes. With 85 Newton meters of peak torque, there's tons and tons of torque on this bike. You honestly, it feels like there's maybe a little too much at times. Who am I kidding? There's really no such thing as too much power. Uh, but when, when trails get tight and technical, the highest power mode actually does make it a little more difficult to control the bike. It's hard to balance and maneuver and, and keep the bike going where you want it to go when you have so much torque. Uh, you can hit the pedals and the bike just starts going and you lose control of that front end. So honestly, when I'm in the really technical twisty stuff, I drop the power mode down to like the middle or the lowest so I can manage the bike just a little bit better. Second thing that I find super important is the range. Is there enough range to go do the types of rides I want to go do on this bike? And with the 504 watt hour battery, I feel like there's plenty of battery to go do your standard everyday rides. In fact, I rode an entire day forgot to charge it at night and I was able to go do a ride the next day and still have enough battery to finish that ride without any problems. The last thing that I find super important on an e-bike is how natural does it feel? How much like a normal bike does it feel? Uh, is it loud? Is it obnoxious and annoying? As far as the motor feeling natural and coming on smoothly, it does a great job. It feels very, very good and it is pretty quiet. Like especially in those lower power modes, you can barely hear it. Um, they're pretty stealthy. Uh, but when you're not pedaling, something in the motor disengages and you do get a bit of a rattle. And it's 
pretty much consistent across all the EP8s that I've ridden. Not really a deal breaker, you get used to it pretty quick. I, I guess I have two solutions for you if it really, really bothers you. The one is uh, never stop pedaling because it only happens when you're coasting. So do that or uh, buy a pair of headphones. Wow. All right, so let's talk about how this thing actually rides, which is probably why you're here. Uh, let's start. Let's start with the climbing performance. I used to think all e-bikes were just, you know, top shelf, 10 out of 10, couldn't get better. And to a degree that's true. E-bikes have a battery and a motor and they climb faster and better than your traditional mountain bike. There's no way around that. But I have come to find out that some e-bikes climb better than others. And the Heckler MX is one of those bikes. And it comes down to two things. The first is the Heckler MX has the full power EP8 motor in it. It has the full 85 Newton meter peak torque. So you get a ton of power, but you're not pushing this really long travel, really heavy 55, 60 pound bike up a hill with that power. You know, it's, it's kind of in a middleweight class. Anytime you're in kind of that like straight, fast, open terrain where you're climbing, that power is just incredible. You can fly uphill. It does become a little unwieldy when you get into the really tight, technical, twisty, balancey stuff. Uh, that's where maybe something like the Orbea Rise will climb a little bit better than the Heckler MX. But I think overall, the Heckler MX is just a really, really good climber. The second factor, and probably the most important factor to how well this bike climbs, is the suspension platform. That lower link Santa Cruz VPP design generates so much traction. It is insane. If you haven't ridden it, do it and you'll know what I'm talking about. It is, you know, a little more active. So uh, you do get a bit more pedal bob, especially on the e-bike because they care even less about pedal efficiency because you have a motor to overcome that deficiency. So on the Heckler MX, you've got this really active, really ground hugging, smooth rear end, which just makes climbing incredible, you know, especially when you have that extra power, that extra torque, where if you were to stand up on maybe a different suspension platform and stand up and really crank, you know, that back wheel is going to spin out. But with the Heckler MX, man, it's just glued to the ground and you can stand up, you can put all the power down you want. And it's actually kind of tough to get that back wheel to break loose. And it's pretty, pretty impressive. So I think it comes down to those two things, you know, the full power motor in the middle weight class and that suspension design. It's tough to beat it. Oh, I don't think I fit. So now let's talk about how this bike goes downhill, which is the fun part. Well, on an e-bike going uphill is actually kind of fun too. Downhill, fun part now. So I actually really liked the 27.5 Heckler when I rode that. Um, it has this really plush, uh, active suspension feel, ground huggy quality to it. It just makes it really, really fun to ride. Plus it you know, has that higher uh, sprung to unsprung weight, which you know, it's technical fancy stuff, but the heavier the bike is, the easier it is for the suspension to move. So it does really, really well, and it feels really good. The Heckler MX with that reduction in travel doesn't quite feel the same. It doesn't have that ultra plush feel that the standard 27.5 Heckler has, but I don't think it's any less capable. I'll explain why. So when you throw that, you know, big 29 inch front wheel on, on the bike, not only do you get better rollover, kind of better smoothing out those transitions from steep to, to flat, uh, you get slacker geometry, which always helps in the capability department. So even though it's 20 millimeters shorter on the front, 10 millimeters shorter on the back, I don't think you lose any capability at all. But you gain this very playful, lively, energetic character that you don't have on the 27.5 version of this bike. The Heckler MX uses a uh, RockShox Pike fork, uh, where the 27.5 version uses a Fox 36. That Pike is now kind of in the trail bike category for forks, where you have like the, the Lyric as the all mountain fork and the Zeb as the Enduro fork. So it's a little bit interesting to see that kind of lighter duty Pike on an e-bike, especially one with 140 millimeters of travel. I would not hate riding this bike with a Lyric on it. I think that would probably help give that front end just a little bit kind of softer, more plush feel, uh, a little bit more confident feel. I don't think it's really a deal breaker that it comes with a Pike versus a Lyric. I think Santa Cruz was trying to separate this bike a little bit more from the 27.5 Heckler. And again, the Bullet, they were trying to put it in that lighter weight trail category rather than a, a heavy duty brawler. So I don't think it's a really 
a deal breaker, but it's probably something to pay attention to. And the last thing I want to touch on with uh, the Heckler MX on the Descents is this bike is your best adventure buddy you've ever had. Most e-bikes are pretty good at getting you to places where you wouldn't normally ride your mountain bike. Uh, you know, super steep climbs up to the top of a peak and down some weird deer trail or something like that. E-bikes are great for that in general. And the Heckler MX is probably the best for that that I've ridden. A couple of reasons why. So the, the Heckler has all the power to get you up the steepest, nastiest climbs. But then on the downhill, it's not this big unwieldy monster truck of a bike you know it's still pretty manageable uh, which makes it really good for that adventure style riding i don't know if you've ever done that kind of stuff where you go up some stupid mountain and come down this trail where the word trail is used very loosely uh, having a maneuverable bike is very nice a lot of times you got tight corners or like a hard to follow section of trail so you're making these last minute cuts and bobs in and out of bushes and rocks and trees and stuff trying to find the trail the heckler mx is very very good for that when you watch this video you'll see why you know i got super lost on this trail and the mx was probably the ideal bike for that situation i would take it over the Orbea Arise, just because it has a little more power. It helps with those really steep, punchy climbs where you come around a corner and you're like, oh no, and you know, look up at that climb. And I'd also take it over something like the Bullet or, you know, another full power long travel e-bike because it's not overbuilt. It's not a wrestling match to get this thing around a corner or up and over this weird rock. You know, it's a little more maneuverable and manageable. So I think it's the perfect adventure bike. If you like to go explore, ride every little trail you find, this is a really good option for you. Ooh, I don't know where this trail goes. So who is the Heckler MX for? I think it is for the rider who wants to go out on those big, stupid adventures. They want to go ride every little trail around their house that they've never had the energy or the, the motivation to go ride. This is the bike that allows you to do that. It's the bike that allows you just to head out on a trail and it's like, oh, here's this one, here's this one, and you just go ride every last one of them. I also think it's for the person who's maybe not totally sold on the really big, really heavy e-bike experience. You know, it's kind of like the Orbea Rise where it's a little bit lighter, a little bit more like your normal mountain bike. I think the Heckler MX is a great option for someone looking for a little bit lighter, a little bit less overbuilt e-bike. So that's going to wrap it up for the Heckler MX. I did want to say we just hit 10,000 subscribers on this channel. So thank you all very, very much. I'm so stoked that you're liking these videos. If there's any topics you want to see us cover in the future, leave it in the comments below. Hit us up on Instagram, email, whatever. Really like the response we get from these videos. Seems like you guys really like them. So I'll keep making them, I guess. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Oh, there's a rim strike. Oh, no. I got a flat. That rim strike did me in. Ah, oh, that sucks. Hopefully it's not a long walk.